Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and in today's video, a little sneak preview of one thing I'm gonna predict behind me here. We're gonna talk about my predictions for what Blizzard will announce for World of Warcraft Shadowlands this weekend at BlizzCon Line. Um, it's gonna be on Friday and Saturday, and I think most of the news will probably be coming out on the Friday. So do stay tuned for that. I may watch it on stream with you guys, and certainly here on the channel, I have lots of info covering everything you need to know about what will be coming and what is actually announced. But today we're gonna dream big, we're gonna talk about what might be. So today we're predicting the content of Shadowlands that they're going to announce, like the meat and potatoes, the actual gameplay, new dungeons, new raids, new zones, all that sort of stuff. To give it a bit of context, this is what they did for BFA, starting from launch. So we had launch, um, now patch 8.1 in BFA, gave us the new, a new raid in Battle of Desire lore, and then also a mini raid with the Crucible of Storms. There was more war campaign, there were faction assaults, so these were little assaults around the different zones, more island expeditions, some mini stuff like pet battles, heritage armor, that sort of thing. And I think this will sort of set the stage for 9.1, the first major patch uh, of Shadowlands. 8.15, again, this is another minor patch. 8.2, this is the big one. This is where they added the uh, Nashatar zone, Mechagon zone, Eternal Palace raid, the new Mechagon mega dungeon, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. And then patch 8.3, the final major patch, is where they added Nihilotha, the, uh, the Waking City raid. They added the assaults in Uldum and in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. They are like the, the new zones, kind of revamped old zones. And then the horrific visions um, sort of mini instanced content. So I expect this is basically what we're looking at for Shadowlands as well. Three major patches with major raids and major new zones coming in those. Patch 9.1 then, the first major patch. I suspect probably coming somewhere around May or June. Uh, what's it gonna contain? Well, I think like patch 8.1 from BFA, I don't expect a new zone. What I do expect to see is more content in the Maw. I think new dailies, perhaps new currencies to do, Possibly even some new areas opening up in the Maw. I could see that happening, but I expect more Maw. I also expect more Torghast, probably some new wings, maybe some new sort of ways to play, kind of like the Twisting Corridors building on that, giving you more cosmetic rewards, more optional rewards, more fun rewards, but also as well, I think upgrading our legendaries further, maybe even slapping some new fun effects on them or getting gem sockets for our legendaries, something else like that, something that feels pretty cool so that going back into Torghast and doing more of that uh, feels like a worthwhile thing to do. One possible new system, one possible new form of content that I would love to see, just rip off something that already works in a different game, and that's the Kuva Lich system from Warframe, or you might be familiar with the Nemesis system from the Shadows of Mordor series. The way it works though, in Warframe specifically, you get a Kuva Lich, which is a randomly generated arch nemesis for your character. They'll show up in your missions, they'll steal your loot, they'll attack you and be a pain in the ass. What you have to do is hunt them down and they're very difficult bosses, but the reward when you defeat them is that you get a really cool, powerful and unique piece of loot that you can only get off of Kuva Liches. I think something like this with Mossworn Lieutenants would tie in incredibly well in patch 9.1, right? Where during your Torghast runs or while you're adventuring in the Maw, a Mossworn Lieutenant, a randomly generated arch nemesis for your character would show up and these guys could drop really awesome loot, really awesome collectibles. I think it'd just be a fun way to build your character and, and have a cool time. But my two major predictions for this patch are this and this, okay? Torghast Citadel, new raid in patch 9.1. That is my prediction. I think Blizzard likes to draw nostalgia, and I think, you know, nostalgia sells, it works well, it works for World of Warcraft, you know, Legion being a throwback to Burning Crusade, all of that. I think we're gonna have Torghast Citadel. Um, you know, we're not gonna get a new zone. We've got Torghast right there. The Torghast Antechamber with the Summoning Stone is right there. Stick a raid portal inside. What is Torghast Citadel going to be? Well, just like um, Ice Crown is on the other side of this rift here uh, behind us, I think Torghast is basically going to mirror Ice Crown Citadel. It's gonna be really similar and just a big nostalgia trip back to that. I think we could see Kel'Thuzad in there as a boss. I think we could see Saurfang in there as a boss. Right? I think it was Saurfang's son was a boss in the original Ice Crown Citadel. I think we could see the real Saurfang stuck in the Shadowlands, sort of being controlled by the Jailer, come in as a boss as well. 
probably some undead dragons. I think that makes sense. And of course then, to cap it all, <laughs> I think this guy, Anduin, at the top of, uh, <laughs> I almost said Ice Crown, but at the top of Torghast Citadel, the final boss of Torghast Citadel, is Anduin as sort of Arthas come again. Like, this is obviously something that has been building through the Torghast storyline. We've seen Shalomane forged into Shalomorn, I guess you could say, forged into a Morn blade. Lots of references. Anduin, he even just looks like Arthas. And I just think it would be a cool and appropriate throwback, right? Go in and, and let's do it. Let's throw down. Let's fight Anduin as a Death Knight. Anduin as Lich King. In terms then of a mini raid, I think we could see that possibly before this Torghast Citadel that I'm predicting, or possibly after, depends whether they follow the, the Legion or the BFA format. In BFA, it was after the first major raid as this essentially a really hard challenge raid um, for you know the, the raiders that had already gone in and cleared out the major raid, i.e. Torghast Citadel of the major patch. This is like a bonus extra super hard content. And I think that's a good model. I hope actually that is what they do. I'm predicting this. The House of the Chosen, you know, we're looking for content here that is mostly already in the game, you know, that they're not going to have to go out and make a ton of new art, make a ton of new zones, very much like the Crucible of Storms in BFA, really built off of Stormsong Valley uh, and the dungeons in there, the Shrine of the Storms, right? I think the House of the Chosen is a natural way to go. I think I think Taliesin and Evatel are always arguing for this, right? That the layout is just perfect. Uh, for a raid. I think it would work. We've got that Necrolord motif going on. I know we have three Necrolord dungeons. It's a lot of Necrolord, uh, you know, <laughs> three Necrolord dungeons, but I do think this would be a very cool raid. Fight some big Necrolord bosses. Again, I could actually see Kel'Thuzad coming in here and Kel'Thuzad ending up as, as sort of the mastermind behind the House of the Chosen. I could see that as something that happens. Uh, otherwise, we could fight that, that big dude. I forget what his name was, but the big dude that took it over uh, in the storyline. Yeah, I, I think it would just make for a fun little mini raid that's sort of off to the side. It's this sort of side content stuff. There's these House of the Chosen dudes. They've gone all evil, but it's not really connected to the, the main story, it feels, all that much. It's just, these a bunch of enemies off on the side, perfect for a side raid. Looking ahead, way in the future then, I expect sometime like November, December, I think way near the end of the year, it's when we get patch 9.2, the second major patch of Shadowlands. I expect them to tease it completely, maybe even just announce it here at BlizzCon. Where can it go? I think this is where we're going. I think it's going to be all about Tyrande. I think it's going to be all about Elune. And again, remember, patch 8.2, this is where we're halfway through the expansion. And remember, where's the point 0.1 patches, those first major patches are adding a new raid and sort of expanding the existing content. It's the point 0.2 patches where they always add the big new thing. You know, we're talking about uh, the, the, is it the Broken Shore? I can't even remember now. The Broken Shore in Legion, right? And the Tomb of Sargeras. We're talking about Najatar, Mechagon. Ajara's Eternal Palace in BFA. This is the equivalent. My guess is that we're going to go to a, a zone that's all about Elune. Maybe Elune's realm. Is that part of the Shadowlands? I don't know about the lore. Let me know in the comments below. I think though it would make a whole lot of sense and just be awesome for the story if that is what, uh, what would happen. And again, my prediction would be that this would be a very dark zone, you know, tying into the whole theme of the moon. So I think, you know, like a dark sky with the moon shining down. And I expect it actually be a snowy zone, right? I think that's one aspect of, uh, of you know, the afterlives, one sort of concept of the afterlife that hasn't been explored in the Shadowlands, right? Just this you know, frozen, sort of desolate almost landscape, but just, you know, the idea of, of death by cold, an ice age type of zone. I think that would fit in really well. It also ties in um, to the, the blizzard bear that is coming with BlizzCon. I think that makes sense uh, that they could be using creatures sort of like that you know much like we had the Silverian Dreamer came out as uh, one of the the six month mounts right one of the store mounts that obviously ties into Ardenweald I think this bear likely ties into a snowy zone and like I said Blizzard loves some nostalgia Northrend was like the snowy expansion I think a, a proper snowy zone would tie in really well to to Shadowlands and how it sort of uh, brings back a lot of the motifs of Wrath of the Lich King and if there's one system that I can predict that I would like to see added to the game and would probably be most appropriate for a patch 9.2 would be, okay, you know, we've defeated Torghast. We took down Torghast Citadel. We freed the place and we set the Rune Carver free. 
If he could craft us legendary items with one hand, what's he gonna do when that second hand is free? I think something along the lines of this. Rune blades are one of the most iconic things about Warcraft lore and the sort of the power that's imbued into them. And I think it would be really awesome to take that rune carving system a step further and let us craft our own runic weapons. Warframe, a game which I think is awesome, has systems like this already in there where you can again choose the different parts of your weapons and create weapons with different stats and effects. And I think that works really well, so why not steal a system like that and put it in? A type of crafting system where you get to choose the different parts of the weapon, maybe the hilt, the blade, the types of runes that get emblazoned onto it. And all of these could have different powers which have different effects. You know, think of the coolest trinket effects, right? The history of WoW and start baking in things like that onto your weapon. You know, do you want a weapon that could, you know, proc something cool, like increase your casting speed uh, by like 10% for a few seconds? Do you want it to proc uh, intellect? Do you want it to have sort of an active effect where it shoots out like a, a beam of ice and does some damage? There's lots of different cool things that you could have here and really customize the weapon, make it feel actually special and have all those different pieces you know, have different effects. Like you'd have a scythe blade, but you could stick it on like a one-handed thing, have a sort of curved sword. You could stick it on a, on, a, on a pole, have it be a scythe. There's cool stuff there. There's options for just awesome visuals. And to give players a real incentive to go and farm this stuff out, craft different runic weapons for different scenarios, and actually try them out and have some fun. And then something I think they won't get into at BlizzCon, because this is just so far away in the future, but it's patch 9.3. I think the Jailer, he's got to be the big bad guy of the expansion. That's what I want. It's probably what everyone wants. Just a big evil dude to fight at the end. I think that would be cool. Um... And yeah, I think that the the sort of the ideas I've had here do tie into that. We go into Torghast, we we take down Anduin, we save Anduin uh, in patch 9.1, Torghast Citadel. And then the Jailer, he sort of disappears and we're kind of going like, well, where's the Jailer gone? What has he been up to? Uh, you know, what are his plans? What's he doing? We don't really know. We get distracted by this whole Elune thing and Tyrande and she's gone crazy. We have to go and deal with her. When she's dealt with, we come back. Maybe the Jailer, maybe he invades Northrend and we've got revamped Northrend zones with this Jailer and his, some sort of secret armies built up. They've invaded the real world now. Oh God, everything's gone horrible. He's the new Lich King, blah, blah, blah. Something like that could easily happen. Who knows, but I, I think it would set it up well. Uh, and like I said, I think it's so far in the future they won't get into this at BlizzCon, but this is where I expect the story should go. So we'll see. I sort of skipped over the 0.5 patches as well, these sort of halfway points, uh, like the one I already have a video on it and all the changes coming. I even went in depth into all of the covenant changes for each different class and how that's gonna affect them. You can find that video on the channel already for patch 9.0.5, which they've already uh, announced and revealed a lot of the details for. But I kind of skipped over those here in this video, but I mean, I would expect to see things. There could even be some revamps to some old PvP battlegrounds. I think that could definitely happen. Uh, we will almost definitely see Legion time walking, which is hard to believe, but we had Warlords of Draenor time walking uh, last expansion. This could be the time that we, yeah, almost definitely we see loads Legion time walking dungeons. Pretty cool. I also expect we'll see, you know, more heritage armor coming through, more allied races I'm expecting as well. I'll do another video on that though. We'll have some fun with that one. I obviously expect Pathfinder as well, flying in Shadowlands to come reasonably soon as well, probably in patch 9.1. So they'll, I'm sure they'll have all details about that at BlizzCon. People want to fly, get around the place. But guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're hyped like I am for BlizzCon. Again, let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.